Let's turn our attention to the west wall. I'm going to place a full height cabinet to begin with. And let's go ahead and make some modifications to this. Let's double click on it. And the first thing is, is let's adjust the height to 95 and an eighth. And I'm going to set the width to 36. Notice when I change that, it also shifts the doors. Now on the front of this cabinet, I want to add a bank of drawers down below it. So right on this separation, I'm going to select Add New, choose the drawer size that I want, 13 and a half, and select the drawer. Let's go ahead and add another drawer. This one will be 8 inches. And finally one more drawer. I'm going to make this 6 and 3 quarters. That way it's going to match the base cabinet that I put next to it. Now notice I've worked from the bottom up. I'm going to go ahead and select the top of this and change that item height to 24 inches. And now I roughly have the shape and style of the cabinet I want. This is a frameless cabinet with a full overlay. Those dimensions are fine. On this door style, let's go ahead and change the door style. Let's go ahead and go into the library and Let's find a European pole style. Broaden that up so we can see it a little bit. Change that for the door style. I'm going to remove the hardware. Remove that and let's do the same thing for the drawer. Let's change the style. Again, we'll browse back into the exact same area we're at under rectangular, find the European. And make that change. Again, remove the hardware since that's an integrated pole. All right, now one final thing on the cabinet. I want this cabinet, this wall cabinet, to actually have a glass door in the middle. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to select that door and in the library I'm going to change it specifically, even though it's going to be the same drawer, that will allow me to change it to be glass. So in the catalog again. I'm just going to browse right back in to the same area under rectangular European. Broaden that so we can read it and select that. So you won't see any changes until I use the material painter but it is a different door style because I went through this library option right here. And as long as I'm in here let's go ahead and specify the shelves. I'm going to set that to be two and finally on the materials for those shelves I want those to be glass. So let's change the material to be a glass. So I'm going to browse down into my glass area, find our standard glass and select OK. Now to turn the front of that door glass let's go ahead and use our material eyedropper. I'm going to grab glass right off of the, let's just use the glass off of the microwave since we know that should be a match and I'm in component mode in the material painter down here in the very lower left hand corner of the screen my material painter is in component mode and now I can apply that just on that single cabinet element face item. Let's change the grab the material off the door and for the components let's go ahead and change those so we can match the rest of that and I probably need to get the toe kick so let's orient that around and we'll grab that off and get the toe kick. So now by doing it that way I can get an individual component with a set of glass doors. So if I grab this cabinet make it my default let's go ahead and slide that over near the corner and when I place one more wall cabinet that's the handy part of that tool will take on all the attributes that we already have. 
I'm going to place a base cabinet in between these two full height cabinets. And I'm going to use a new tool called the Object Eyedropper. You can find that up here in the upper right menu. If I click on the full height cabinet and now the object properties that I want to paint, what I'm interested in grabbing are the drawer properties, these four items down here. Select OK and now I'm going to apply those to the object down here. If you zoom in you can see that it actually changed the drawer sorry the drawer properties and if I double click on this cabinet the first thing I want to do is on the front of it let's change that to a frameless cabinet to match the walls cabinet and we'll also set it to be a full overlay on the front of the cabinet let's change this item to a drawer and then let's add one more drawer and we'll set that in to be 8 inches select OK and now that matches the wall cabinet with the exception of the color and we'll just grab the color off of the, uh, the item and apply it. Zoom out it's very easy to copy and paste that cabinet over on this side so that we can then create our entertainment center. So I've opened up an example of the final wall elevation that we're after. We placed a couple of the cabinets for the full and a couple of the base cabinets. So let's go ahead and uh, wrap wrap up the final steps on this. Let's pull this over. So to begin with, let's slide this base cabinet over to the side, open up the library, and grab our wine refrigerator. I've saved one of those in my favorites catalog, so let's just browse down, find the wine refrigerator, click and place that. If you recall when we did our pass through, we extended the countertop through the pass through element and the way we did that was select the cabinet use a tool down here called generate custom countertop that will disengage the countertop from the cabinet itself in the floor plan view you can come in then press the tab key grab that pull our countertop over and then when we go back into the elevation view it's extended that countertop over now, let's close the library browser. We won't need that. For the entertainment area, let's place a filler, a base filler, next to the wall here. And let's set that width to be 1 inch. And we'll just bump that against the wall. This base cabinet, slide over, resize it to 30 inches. And let's create a couple of copies of that. Let's just take one over here and one more over here. Now on this cabinet, I want to open it up. And on the front, let's go ahead and remove the two drawers. And then on the single drawer remaining, let's change that item to a right auto door and then on the front of it let's change that to glass and finally in the materials for the shelves let's change that to glass as well press G on the keyboard to skip down to glass and select OK and let's go ahead and slide that cabinet over use our material painter and grab that filler so it matches and I'm going to copy that using the copy tool down here in the lower left reflect it around the center of that cabinet and place it on the very end. Let me open up one of the uh, renderings that I have and on the edge of that uh, countertop you'll notice the island has a waterfall style. I want to replicate that same waterfall, waterfall style on the uh, last base cabinet that we were just placing. So to do that, I'm going to use the custom countertop tool, and I'm going to do that in the plan view, actually. So let's just slide down in here. And using the custom countertop tool, let's just snap in and uh, drag out a uh, countertop. And let's zoom in. I want the thickness to be one and a half. And if I double click on that, I'm going to set the height to be 36 and an eighth. 
unchecking set height from cabinet because there's no cabinet. And then on the thickness, if I type in 36, that will then extend all the way down to the floor. Let's go back into our uh, wall elevation camera. And now you can see the way that looks. So the final step in this elevation view before we go back and change the materials, I want to generate a custom backsplash back here. And all I'm going to do in that case is select the tool, click on the wall, and it will displace it. Let's go into our 3D view. Let me close this. And let's change our colors and materials here. So the first thing is on the backsplash, let's use our material eyedropper, pick up the same glass that we have over there, apply that. And then in the library, let's open that up and I'm looking for a product. I think it's from Cambria. Let's scroll down in here. Here's Cambria. And let's see a color I can find here. And there we go. I recognize that name. So for that color, let's go ahead and apply that to the objects. I don't want it to apply it to all in the uh, room. It looks like I need to get that filler right there. And now I have a different color. I'll use that same color for the island as well. I may have to rotate around here just a little bit and get that last filler that we had applied. So let's just pick that color up and apply it in there. And of course the final step would just be adding our accessories for the uh, photo. If we go back into the render, you can go into the library and add your photos and accessories. And it's nice because you can then personalize a style and, and it's not very hard to do and really adds an extra touch in making the design come to life. The final step on this west wall is to make sure our dimensions are accurate. Back in our floor plan, the first thing I notice are the base cabinets actually intersect with our door casing molding. When I place those cabinets, I actually meant to only make the depth 18 inches. Here's a tip that uh, you can do. I can select the base cabinet tool and if I hold the shift key down instead of just clicking here, which would place a cabinet, I can draw a marquee around all of my base cabinets. This is a handy tool if you want to just isolate base cabinets, wall cabinets, or full height cabinets. Now that I have that selected, I'm going to double click and open them, change the depth to 18 inches, and reset that. And the only thing I need to do now is slide back our custom counter. Now I can take our wall elevation using our wall elevation tool here and place our dimensions. I'm going to use the same tool we used on our main wall elevation to create our dimensions, NKBA auto elevation dimensions. Now sometimes when your dimension defaults or your annotation sets are on the wrong set, notice that my default right now is NKBA general. If that were on something like quarter inch scale and I click this auto dimension, you're going to get some very ugly looking dimensions. So just a tip if that's the way they look. Let's go ahead and delete those. Change our annotation set back to NKBA general and now apply that. So they look much better in this case. Um, in some situations they're not perfect. Our cabinet and our door happen to be at the exact same position so we have a zero up there. You can just work your way around. I clicked on that diamond and pulled it off. You'll notice that uh, perhaps down here it didn't pick up our filler or our waterfall cabinet. Now there may be some cases where that happens uh, where a dimension doesn't get picked up. It's possible in this case because our original filler I did a copy and reflect about and it may have considered it turned inside out um, and while I could redraw that filler I don't want to so here's a little trick that I use I'm gonna press the W on the keyboard that will give me a uh, line I'm gonna draw a line here and I'm gonna draw a line here that way now I can simply snap to those dimensions 
and just pull those up and clean those up here just a little bit. You'll notice there's a little small square handle where you can pull those dimensions up and now I can actually turn that layer off. Let's just grab that layer. It's on CAD Kitchen and Bath so let's turn that layer off and then you won't see those lines. So that's one tip I use if it won't pick up some dimensions. Here's an extra dimension that we have on the door where it lines up. So you can work your way around and uh, clean your uh, clean your elevation up. Here's our center line. We can pull that up into our appliance. We plan to put a TV above this cabinet over here. So I'm going to highlight this dimension, grab the extra diamond, pull it into the cabinet. I'm going to now pull that center line up. And notice that uh, it doesn't have the word center line below it. If I double click on that dimension and on the extension area, there is an area down here for mark as center line. So I'll change that and that will add that center line dimension to it. Actually, I grabbed the uh, wrong extension. Let's change that first of all, remove it off of extension one. I'll just mark that as a center line and now you'll see that that is a center line on that particular element. That's how you can control the center line.